It's Mr. Cardinal Official, and right about now, you are in tune to the legendary Sugar Hill Gang Podcast. What's up, what's up, what's up, world? What's happening? What's going on and what's going down? I am your host, the Master G, and this is the Sugar Hill Gang Podcast. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies uh. and gentlemen, children of all ages, let's put our hands together for Cardinal Official. <laughs> give it up, folks. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. No doubt. I, I, was told that, I, I was told that there's a, there's always a party when Cardi, Cardi's at the party or Cardi always gives a party. <laughs> I, I, was, I was told that and I wanted to say it. That's ah. right. Yeah. I know. That's right. That's right. That's what it is, man. What that's up, what it man? is, bro. What's going no. on, man? Hey, the pleasure is mine. I'm happy to be, you know what I mean, rocking with y'all today. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I know I'm not supposed to ask the questions, but where are you today? Like, where are you right now? DMV. I'm in the, 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 the oh. DC. Yes. I'm in, I'm in, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, in, yeah. I'm in the thick of it. I, I, I live literally like 15 minutes outside of the city, Washington, DC. So I'm, okay. I'm like a stone's throw away from my father in law. My father in law, he's out that way. He's out that way. Yeah. So I know it very well. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And we're, then, and then, we're, we're in New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right yeah. up. Yeah. yeah so, next to the George Washington Bridge. So okay. let me, Got let it. me do this. And let me do this. Uh, first, let me say this. Uh, the, 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 this this whole thing was presented to me by these phenomenal people, my producers and Hen and mm -hmm. Diamond and, and 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 Mike is always with us. Wonder Mike is always with us. He's there. Yeah. He's my partner in crime and the whole nine. Uh, so this whole project was presented to me in a way where because of who we are and and I'm very and I told you before my words are thankful and grateful. I'm thankful and grateful we have this legacy. Forty one yes. years we still rocking. We still yes. rolling. Um, yes. The thing about it was I needed to continually allow us to be reinvented. You know, I mean, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm before before uh, uh, COVID and everything hit. I'm talking about, you know, I left for a long time. It came back 2005. I had to be introduced to a whole lot of different things. Reinvention, you know, uh, uh, moving up to, you know, we had to go through a period of time where we had to reinvent ourselves as far as how to perform and get through the legal reinvented, you know, moving into 2016, we got the blast, we was on so forth and so on to 2020 happens reinvented, you follow what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. the whole situation about the podcast was that a lot of people know of us, but most people don't know us. And mm. then the other thing was that I'm aware of this thing because believe because I'm the beginning of this thing, but mm. I'm not aware of the people in this thing. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So mm -hmm. I, the whole reason for me to do the show was so that I could do what I'm doing right now. I mean, like when mm. I'm told that you are uh, like what what we are to American hip hop, you are oh, to okay. Toronto hip hop, and then moving right along. You know what I mean? And then to look into, you know, what's going on and see everything that you've done. It's a very exciting thing for me because every time I get a chance to talk to somebody, it gives, I call it uh, uh, the limbs on the tree. So it's like, if we're like the roots to the tree, the tree grows and as the tree keeps growing, these limbs keep on coming out and there's leaves and all these different things. And I'm, and I'm steadily being introduced to all of these limbs and then other trees growing off these. So, this is great for me, man. And I and I want to say that it's a pleasure and a true honor for you to agree to come on there and do this with us. So thank you for that. That's 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 my first thing. And then the second thing is, man, I was tr I was trying to figure out. I, I didn't want to mess up your name. You, you, uh, names are very important to me. You know, Master G, <laughs> it, 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 it's a very it, Master G is a very important thing to me. You know, some people call me Wonder Mike sometimes. They'd be like, Wonder Mike, Wonder Mike. No. He's one of my, I'm Master G, but you know, it's just how people are. So mm -hmm. I was like, and I kept asking my team, I was like, is it Cardinal? Is it Cardinal? Is it official? Official? Tell me yeah. about that, man. What is the whole situation? I, I know you got to have issues with that. You know what? I really don't, I, I can't say that I have issues with it at this point in time. I tried to spell it out um, at least somewhat phonetically, you know what I mean? So right. that no matter where I went, uh, at least people would get you know, some part of it, right? And initially, because, you know, my background, my family's from Jamaica, um, you know, they, they, they emigrated to Canada, America, the UK um, in the 70s, because at that point in time, that is when 
uh, those countries, what was happening in the Caribbean was uh, the governments were literally, um, you know, saying we need professionals, we need doctors, nurses, teachers, engineers, and so forth. And that's when you had the great brain drain uh, of the 70s that happened in the Caribbean is where everybody, you know, when I remember started that going to the states, you know what I mean? So yes, yeah, Brooklyn, so, Brooklyn, uh, um, they, they started coming into know, Brooklyn and Bed Stuy and all of that. Ab- I remember that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and Cardi, Florida, what, heavy what, too. what, so what I year? Think, so I, I, I was, was going to ask you what year did did Jamaica uh, win their independence? Sixty three, I think. Sixty three or sixty four? Okay, sixty three or sixty four is when they got their independence, I believe. Okay. Okay. So your parents. And, if, and I was gonna say, if and I was gonna say, and if not, you know, I'll be crucified on the internet. But, <laughs> you, but, you, but, I, I, but, I, but I believe it's. I believe it's sixty three, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. But, but, but go ahead. Tell me the story. Yeah. Go. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, um, you know, for me, growing up, growing up in in the city, growing up in Toronto, uh, it's it it is very similar to the Bronx and Brooklyn. To where there is a very, very, very large Caribbean population. Of yes, course, yes. now there's a there's been a, a a heavy influx of people from the continent as well. So you know now we have a lot of Somalians, Ethiopians, um, Nigerians, and and so forth. But you know, for me coming up, it was predominantly uh, all the neighborhoods were you know had a a, a very, very strong Caribbean population. And that's mm-hmm. just, you know, that's just what I knew. That's what it was in my household. That's what it was in the neighborhood growing up. That's what it was in school and so forth. So, um, you know, for, you know, for me, Cardinal Official, you know, I, I wanted it to, um, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted the, the name to have a flair and have a style because, you know, similar, similar to y'all, I think for me, having the culture be a part of my name was very important, meaning I didn't want to go anywhere else and there be, you know, the same way, you know, people didn't want for there to be another Sugar Hill, another Big Daddy Kane, another whatever. I didn't want to have a, for me, I needed to have my name be one that whether it was in, you know, China, Europe, Canada, America, when people say the name Cardinal Official, they know there's only one person that they're talking about. So Mm, that was, you know, that was something that I strive to have is to have um, a unique name. Now, mind you, you know, having this double long ass name, this was clearly somebody who had never signed a signature before because when I started to become famous and I had to start <laughs> to sign my shit and I was like, God damn it. I was like, why did, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you it, it, official. And they're like, yeah, we need you to sign 200 more of those. I'm like, <laughs> but, um, but, is that, not, you know, the, just, is that the, not the most irritating thing in the world? We got a stack bro. of posters this high. We yeah, need to sign them bro. All. Yeah, man. Ahead, man. But Go um, <laughs> but uh, you know, just to, just to end that off, you know, the the official. I also wanted it to be a play on on my energy. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's off. I shall. Because to me, every time I grab the mic, it's like off. I shall go. I'm gonna go off every I, time. You I know feel, what I'm saying? I feel, so, I like that. I got yeah, it. and 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 one more important thing to mention is that <laughs> one of one of my groups uh, from Toronto that I looked up to at the time was a group called Ghetto Concept, and one of my favorite songs uh, was a song called Certified. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to just listen to that until, like Big said, until my tape popped. So, you know, I you know I was so um, I don't know that song had such an effect on me. I was like, yo, you know, I want to be certified. So I was thinking of like a something synonymous with certified and that's where the official came in. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I got it. Very nice. Yeah. I like yeah, it. Yeah. There's, 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 there's power, strength and longevity in the name. And if you, and if you do the right thing with a name, like you said, that's part of the reason why your career has spanned and lasts so long because you yes, are identifiable. Sir. You know what I mean? And like you said, like with me, with master G, I wanted that, you know, everybody else was doing different things in our neighborhood, you know, it was this and that. And, and I was like, no, nah, I need something that's going to put me in a whole nother category from everybody else. And we just talking about, you know, in a three city area, you know what I mean? I was thinking that, yep. of course, it, it translated, of course, you know, to, to this day right. that, uh, you know, people know that name, uh, uh, but that's cool. So with that being said, tell me your 
Rapper's Delight story. Tell me your Sugar Hill gang. The first time you ever heard Rapper's Delight. What was your ex what was your introduction to us? Uh my pops. Uh my pops, rest in peace. Uh he was a he was a DJ, you know what I'm saying? Um uh when he was when he was younger, you know what I'm saying? Like if he, you know, uh he he died 20 years ago. Actually, this year will be 21, but um in his record collection, you know. He he used to have, uh, you know, the Soul Prince was written on all his joints. So when he was younger, he called himself the Soul Prince. So I mean, okay, you know, any anything from Last Poets, you know, Sugar Hill, um, anything you could think of. Because I mean, he had, you know, I grew up on everything from Gregory Isaacs to George Benson, from Peter Tosh to y'all. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the first thing that I remember was, you know, he he had. Uh, he had the 12 inch and mm -hmm. um, he had the version where it was uh, now I'm going to say two things and, and if I'm wrong then I know what it is but if I remember correctly the 12 inch it had this this multicolored candy cane thing on mm -hmm. candy cane there it is yeah you're talking about that's, the candy that's, cane yes. so that's very much yeah that's very much what I remember growing up as a kid you know what I'm saying taking it out and he taught me how to you know, take the little velvet brush, clean the records, you know what I mean? Put it on, yeah, 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 yeah. put it on. And, you know, he had, you know, he's, like, you know, we're Jamaican, so he, you know, he had the illest sound system at home. So, oh, Lord, no question. you know, I just, yes, yeah, so I just remember putting it on and just rocking out, really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like being a kid, like I tell people all the time, my experience, I didn't understand that this was a thing. I just thought it was how everybody grew up. But I come to understand that, like, my pops and my uncles and them, like, you know, they used to throw basement parties. Like, that was just a thing. I used to be the little kid, four years old, five years old. I'm opening the door. You know, I'm taking, you know, your fur coat. I'm taking your trench coat. I'm taking whatever. You know what I'm saying? Putting it upstairs right. in the room where all the coats yeah. go while, while right. the adults is downstairs. You know what I'm saying? Having the yeah. basement parties and all that. So that's kind of the <laughs> culture that I, that's, that's the culture that I, that I grew up in. So. When I, you know, when I think about that, I really just, you know, think about uh, playing that song over and over and over again uh, at my pop's crib. That's okay. a beautiful so, thing. I bet you, so, so, you ain't never heard sound without bottom, have you? Hell no. What is that? <laughs> no, sir. So, 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 so Cardi, uh, what, what year, what year do you, was it uh, soon after that that you realized that, uh, you know, you, uh, that was the that was your destiny being in rap, you know, being a oh, rapper no. or a producer. No, 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 no. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's important for me to note that I very much. What was the movie? I think the movie was Brown Sugar. When you know the question was when mm -hmm. did you fall in love with hip hop? Yeah, I think yeah. for I think for me, um, you know, the neighborhood that I grew up in, like like I said you know, they used to, you know, bring out the cardboard and, 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 you know, just, just set it up, you know, with the boom box and rock, whether it's on the ball court or wherever it was, these are just things that I grew up with. I didn't at the time understand that it was a, uh, it was a thing more than it was just in our DNA. Like when you grow up and you're in it, it's kind of hard to look at the picture. Like, you know what I mean? Right. You weren't looking at it as outsiders where we grew up hip hop, it was it, it was what it was. This was just a part of of who we were, and and uh, also being in close proximity to America, you know, we also got to pick up the signal of WBLK from Buffalo. So gotcha. you know, what I mean, we'd be we'd be able to tap in to everything that uh, that Buffalo was playing as well, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. obviously being the home of Rick James, you know, yep. heavy, 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 heavy with a lot of influences from SOS band and mm -hmm. just you know, what I mean so many mm -hmm. crazy vibes but i think for me the first time that i understood that i actually loved hip hop like that i loved it for myself like it wasn't my dad's music or whatever was i think Roxanne's revenge when my cousin wow. went to new york came back with a tape and i remember he you know we went to go it's funny because my cousin lived in a in a his he was well off you know what i'm saying he lived in a nice crib and I remember going to his house and we went upstairs to, um, um, you know, to his room and he was an only child. So besides, 
you know, being well off. Like, you know, he had the drum set in there. Like he had everything that I would have wanted. Uh, mm -hmm. But I remember he put it in his, he, you know, he put it in the, in the boom box. And I just remember staring at the cassette going around and around listening to Roxanne's Revenge. And I was just like, I was just hypnotized. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, this, this is, you know what I mean? Like, this is it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, from, you know, from then, you know, he had it obviously early from going to New York and taping it off the radio or whatever it was, um, yeah. making his, you know, his, his, his pause tapes or whatever. But then just hearing it blast in the neighborhood, you know what I'm right. saying? Like riding, right. riding your, riding, riding your BMX bike around the neighborhood and just hearing it blast out of people's windows. Like that's the time that, um, I think organically, I just, I just, that was, that was my genre of choice. You know what I mean? I think growing up in Toronto, we're exposed to uh, a lot of a lot of different genres of music. Um, you know, just it being a real diverse and multicultural place to grow up in. Absolutely. But uh, you know, but Roxanne's Revenge for me was definitely the first time where I'm like, no, 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 this is you know, this is what it, this is what it is. Right. This is what it's about. Right. And then, and then you know, obviously just being infatuated, like everybody has those debates. But Beat Street was my movie. I wasn't a breaking guy. I was I was beat team Beat Street all day. And Great movie. Yeah, yeah. But I think you know what I what I loved most about those movies is just like, you know, thinking about the the characters and thinking about just the raw, you know, the raw energy of it. Like you know, all the breakdance battles. Like that's what you know. That's what I really, that's what I really loved about it. Um, you know, there's there's things that just that I just kept gravitating towards. You know, what I mean, even right. as a young kid, I right. was as a young kid, just in terms of my scholastics, like, you know, I was in the gifted program when I was younger. So I was more advanced than, you know, a lot of the fellas I grew up with in the neighborhood. So okay. my mind was always, you know, thinking bigger picture. Right. And just even if we think about like some of the stuff that was happening with South Africa when I was a kid growing up, I remember right. when they had a. Uh, you know, when they had that, uh, that Sun City project, you know what I'm saying? Um, yep. Like all those different things spoke to me because also, you know, my mom, her whole life, she was heavy in the community. You know what I mean? She worked for the Board of Education, but she was also heavy in the community in terms of, you know, pro providing resources for the kids. My mom used to teach Black history growing up um, on Saturdays, you know what I mean? So, um, there was a lot of, a lot of things that were happening within hip hop that resonated with me, you know gotcha. what I mean? Like, a, gotcha. uh, um, that's why I was heavy into, you know, heavy into PE, you know what I mean? In 87, when they first dropped, um, and yeah, like, like hip hop just felt like a natural place where I, where I wanted to be a hip, a culture that, you know what I mean? I, 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 I wanted to participate in the whole time. And ironically, most people can't say this, but my mom's was the person that actually, first got me to write my own rhymes you know what i'm saying like to write my mm. own verses because oh, really? i mm. used to, yeah i used to just memory i used to just memorize all the tapes so whether it's like you know thinking about songs like fucking frida or um just you know what i mean like all the you know all back in the day i think lottie dottie might have been the first song that i memorized front to back but it's like you know thinking about just ice and dmx bdp like mm -hmm. my thing was I I used to just memorize everything else, you know what I'm saying? Um when Reddy Roxy used to beatbox for for the Fresh Prince and them, like that was okay. my shit. When I was young, I think the first the first name that I gave myself uh no, you know what? Was it I'm trying to think of which one came first. It was either I used to call myself Bismarcky Jr. because I used to be dope oh, with the wow. beatbox. I used to be I used to be dope with the beatboxes back in the day. Oh, oh okay. was, you know, yeah. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah, like, you know, I used to know the whole routine for um a one two a one two. I used to know the whole routine. So I used to call myself Biz Jr. But then I remember when um Joe Ski Love came out with the with the Pee-wee dance, I remember I called myself J Ski Love because my name was Jason. So I totally jacked that name, you know what I mean? Um, wow. But uh, but yeah, man. I mean, listen, you guys are taking me down, you know, taking me down memory lane. But uh, yeah, well, just 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 growing up, you know, my mom was a, was the first person that kind of formalized the whole thing and got me really into like writing my own songs and crafting my you know original material. Right, right. You you you, you, you playing an instrument? 
and, and, no, and, no, no, not not. I'm not theoretically trained. Like I'm a producer, so most uh-huh. of my career, what people don't know is I produce probably about sixty or seventy percent of all my joints. But nah, I can't read theory yeah. or anything. But you know, in the studio, you know, I do, I do. You know, it sounds before. like yeah. Well, you have yeah. see. This is the thing that I that I that, that people uh, uh, have to understand a lot of times is that it's not necessarily like James Brown, for example. James Brown wasn't a classically trained musician or he wasn't a classically trained singer james mm-hmm. brown's gift was his feel james brown's mm. gift was his concept of how music sounded and right. there yep. are many yep. people right. that have transcended that right. concept and i got i mean i, I mean I, uh, prince prince wasn't classically trained yeah but mm. i mean i'm talking about i'm and i'm gonna go deeper but i'm talking about as far as like even from 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 a from a rapping and 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 that that situation there's a lot of people that came into that fold, you know, because our era, you know, the, the, the people that arranged our music and they were, they were trained, they could write, you know, they, they would write the music out and then the musicians yep. would come in and, and they would play, you know, like the horn parts mm-hmm. on Eighth Wonder, that was all written out by a guy named Jiggs Chase and he's a classically Ooh. trained musician. So he would, you know, he'd write out the, the, the whole thing and they'd come in and read off the sheets. But as it started, you know, uh, morphing into the beatbox and people being able to sampling, et cetera, et cetera, as, as the music started to take on that flavor, then the, the art, and I always call it the art of knowing what's a hit. You know what I mean? Mm. There's a big difference between producing a record from scratch, which is a great thing, and hoping it becomes a hit and knowing what people want to hear. You see what I'm saying? Having a feel for what mm-hmm. people want to hear. That's mm-hmm. why I use James Brown. James Brown, even going beyond all of that, he knew what was hot. You know what I'm saying? So he could say, you know, give me the hit. Like, if you ever listen to a James Brown song, James is making the song up. He's producing the song as he does it. Because he'll say, give it to me two times. Mm. You know, but then on another time, he'll say, I want the same yep. song. Yep. I want the same one. So he ain't, he's not telling everybody, go back to that phrase <laughs> and give it to me. He's telling everybody, that shit sounded good, so give it to me again when I when I when I need that get there. Yes. And 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 that's what people feel. Yes. So I, I I've been I've been studying that what I call the, the knowledge of knowing what's a hit. Puffy is it was is, is famous for that. And and you know, and I tell yeah. people all the time, as a rapper, he's not the greatest rapper in the world. No, he's not. But when it comes to putting a song together, he's the one that he'll say, yeah, that's the music. Like with the stuff he did with Biggie, all of that stuff that he said, you know, that he suggested uh, the mm-hmm. M2 May thing and, and, the, and the Barge thing, you know, those are things that, you know, he heard, you know, and I and I see that with cats like yourself too, that it's not mm-hmm. about, you know, uh, 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 what your techniques are. It's about what your feel is. And that's mm-hmm. to me is it, 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 a gem. That's, that's, that's the gift. That's why I call it a gift. So all so, my, so, all my, sorry, sorry and sorry, sorry to cut your hand, but no, no, say, it's all, all, good. all my all my biggest all my biggest joints have like I've you know now yeah and I don't want to skip too far ahead but being you know being an executive uh with a label now also you know what I'm saying like diversifying mm-hmm. my career I mm-hmm. had to I had to come to to actually understand and realize that I've been an AR my whole life you know what I'm saying my whole career so there you go. anything so any anything associated with me Every single song was not one that the label picked or anybody else. Like, it's always been me, you know what I'm saying? Being able to understand what my vision is and how I want to uh, kind of present myself to the world. So even if you look at, like, you know, obviously every, 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 every act has their breakout hit or their standout hit, quote unquote. And, yeah. you know, even for me, you know, um, having Akon sing the hook on, on the Dangerous Joint, like again, yeah. that's that's something that's something that I totally brought to him. You know what I mean? He like did. that's yeah, picked out the music for it. Um, you know what I'm saying, and brought it to him. That's a story in itself. But just just back to your point, where it's like yeah, like every single song that I had that you know had either significant cultural impact or you know sold a lot or streamed a lot. It's you know it is something that I chose. It's the gift, man. That's a gift. Everybody doesn't have Without that gift. Man. There's a, there's a lot of people that do that. But uh, so, yeah, so I mean, and I and I that was one of the songs that I actually uh, uh, listened to and I not to cut you off, Henry, but I did. But I want to get this point in. Tell me the Akon story, because that was one of the first songs that got me because, I, like I said, when I was doing my my research, I was like, OK, well, I want to find out about this guy. And then I started, you know, hitting the YouTubes. And then when that came on, I was like, well, yeah, I know this song, I, you know, and mm-hmm. I, you know, 
So mm-hmm. the, the whole, and I like the concept of the video. You know what I mean? The whole thing with the woman and the, that's, that's incredible. I like that. So mm-hmm. tell me the mm-hmm. Akon story. Tell me about that. Uh, do you, and I want to be specific. Uh, cause the dangerous, dangerous. Do you want the, this, the dangerous story? Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, myself and, you know, myself and Akon, uh, you know, we formalize a partnership, you know, um, cause I was doing my thing internationally, uh, at the same time that he was doing his thing internationally and building up convict. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy, but, you know, I had an offer from, this is when Jay-Z had Rock La Familia and, mm. you know, we had, we had interest from both that camp and then the convict camp. And, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I prayed, I prayed on, I prayed on it and it felt like for me, um, that the Akon fit was, you know, was the better fit. And I, I was on tour with him and Gwen Stefani. So I don't, I don't know if you remember, there was a time when there was a bunch of, a bunch of Akon controversy, like, you know, uh, there was a thing with the underage girl at the time in Trinidad. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. there was a thing where he, where he threw the kid off stage, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I was, I, I was in multiple camera. marriages. It was a multiple marriage thing at one yeah, time. Yeah, yep. yeah all yeah. kind of stuff. So I yeah. was, I was around in those, in those times, but we were on tour. Uh, we were on a North American tour with uh, Gwen Stefani uh, at that time. And mm-hmm. it was the very, very, very last show. The very last show we, we were touring, we were using Timberland's bus and Timberland has a studio on his bus. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, so we were able to record while we were on the road, all, all of his acts. And uh, the, the engineer at the time, his name was Exit. It, Exit's dope. You know, he's, you know, he's engineered for everybody from Akon to Usher to whatever. But mm-hmm. I remember, you know, I said, yo, I said, Exit, I'm going to go, I'm going to go take a shower. But yo, I want you to play this beat for Akon. And he's like, cool, because Akon was supposed to get on the bus in like, you know, five, 10 minutes. So I went upstairs to the, you know, to the hotel room, you know what I mean? Whatever took a shower, put on some new clothes, probably half hour, maybe came back down to the bus that was parked in front of the hotel. And I got on and I went back to the studio and it was just exit and Akon in there. And they were just, they were just silent. I was like, yo, what up? I was like, yo, exit. Did you play the joint for, for Khan? And, and Khan's like, yo, what joint? And I was like, yo, exit playing, playing the joint. So he presses play. And you know what I'm saying? I hear the first eight bars come in. And I'm looking at Akon and Akon's like, you know, he's looking at me like, yo, this is fire. As soon as it turned into the ninth bar, I just heard, girl, I can't know. The man, in the time that it took me to go upstairs, shower, put on my clothes, and come back down, he, he had laid the whole hook already. He wrote and laid the hook Whoa. What? Within, that t- within that time. And Yo. I remember I, I was just like, I took the next 20 minutes, <laughs> I penned out my part, and it was a wrap. So that whole that song record. took about an hour took about an hour to make and that is you know still that to this day phenomenal. my highest yeah my yeah. highest selling that, that, highest selling yeah. highest streaming record but you yeah, know that's a beautiful record, record. Crazy. yeah that's yeah. a beautiful thank you. Thank the, you. the concept and the, and and like i said i once at one i as soon as i heard it i was like oh my god yes of course i know this record you know what i mean i mean i never saw the video but i knew the song and and and, and Aegon singing the hook and now the voice it all made sense it clicked i was like okay i now i, I understand this now so yeah, man, that was that was incredible. I'm go ahead, guys. I'm, I apologize. No, it's all good. Uh, C- Cardi, what I was going to ask you is, uh, when you get in the studio working with various artists and stuff like that, uh, do you have a certain uh, uh, routine that you do, or do you have the idea already in your head, or do you study the artist before you get there, or once you get there? And y'all start vibing together, and then you see what kind of magic comes out of that. Um, to answer that question honestly, and that's a good question, um, probably very little known because I don't. Um, people don't act, usually ask me about my my studio routines, but the reality is, when I got my first major label deal with MCA back in two thousand, um, you know, this is when record deals were still super dope record deals. So. You right, know, I got right. I got a I got a budget to build out my own studio. So ever budget? since two thousand, <laughs> <laughs> a budget, a budget, budget. Yes, we talking sir. about What's budget? That? Budget. Yeah, listen, let me, let me let me tell you something. Outside. Man, at that at that time, 
uh, there was even money to where the label was paying my rent. So I used to have a house in Brooklyn and a house in Toronto at the time. And the house in Brooklyn paid for paid for by the label, yo. Paid for by the label. Wow. Um, the good yeah, old days but... of cars, apartments, houses, all of that is so far gone. I could gray yeah. out my beard and just say it's a Methuselah thing. And it ain't ever coming back. <laughs> Man, listen, I, I, I hope one day, here's, you know, I hope one day that there is going to be, and I think that day will come, that there will be a good, a good uh, uh, a meshing of like the, the power and resource of the label where the artist can still retain a good amount of ownership uh, and control over, you know, over their destiny. Because to me, that's, you know, that is the best, that's the two worlds coming together where, you know, you can do your thing and you have a stronghold over who you are as an artist and what you want to present, but then also have the resources to do so. That ain't your money. You know what I'm saying? But neither here nor neither here nor right. there. Just going back right. to the studio question though, um, I've always had the luxury of uh being by myself in studio. Like I actually love being um being on my own and not having anybody else kind of like um push their ideas or their energy on me if I didn't ask for it. You know what I'm saying? I know that there's a lot of people that love to be in studio with either an entourage or some people like chicks in the studio to give them energy right. or, right. you know, some people have a producer um, that kind of like, you know what I mean, puts the vision together. But like I said, and I think it grew out of absolute necessity. I couldn't afford to buy anybody's beats. You know what I mean? When I was coming up, I just couldn't afford to buy beats. You know what I mean? I didn't have money for studio time. So I used to, you know, uh, I wouldn't advise anybody out there to do it, but I signed a publishing deal when I was in high school and the peanuts that they gave me now to me at the time, was big money. I was like, shit, 50 grand. Woohoo. Like, you know what I mean? I thought I was in the money, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But right. that, but that money allowed me to, you know, I was able to buy, um, and then Sonic, I bought an ASR 10. So I was All able right. to make my own beats at home. And, um, you know, my, my crew, you know, I, I come up, you know, I came up with, you know, Socrates and Sha Claire and people like, you know, those MCs that were at the time in the underground scene, we were making a name for ourselves in the underground scene globally, you know what I'm saying, in Europe, in America, Canada, and everywhere else. So we kind of were, uh, we were self-contained and we made our own beats. So I made the beat, Socrates made the beats, um, another cat named Solitaire and another cat named Marvel you know, we all came up making our own beats. So by the time I got my deal and I built my own studio, I was doing most of the stuff on my own. But, you know, I've also never, be, I think because of that, at the time, th there's not really a quote unquote underground scene anymore because everything's on the net. But I think I, at that time, yeah. the mind, the mindset that I had was like, I only wanted to do collabs with the people that I organically felt were a fit. So, you know, you got to think of like, you know, my heroes at that time, like, oh, it was like, you know, Busta and, mm. and Pharaoh Monch and like, you know, the Roots, you know, Black Thought and mm. Common yeah. and, and all those yeah. type of people. I mean, to be honest, the reason why I chose going with MCA was because at the time they had, uh, you know, they had Black Star, Common and the Roots, yeah. which, you know, those are those are my favorite groups and my favorite MCs at right. the time. Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah, you know. In terms of the collabs, like, you know, I think my first, for me, my first big collab that was a hip hop collab, the first big one was, was Busta Rhymes. And wow. when I went in with, you know, when I went in with Busta, the funny thing is that he sought me out. You know what I mean? Like, um, I went to New York and I was on Hot 97 doing an, inter uh, doing an interview. I think I was on, um, at the time, I think I was on Bobby Condor's show at the time on a Sunday night. Yeah, Bobby. And, and, um, and Buster was calling up, you know what I mean? He was calling up to the studio and he's like, yo, I got to talk to that guy. And I remember like after the show, they're like, yo, Buster's on the phone and wants to talk to you. And I'm looking at Bobby and Jabba and I'm like, but Buster want to talk to me? So I pick up the phone and, you know, it was the crazy thing. It was his birthday. And I remember, um, you know, I remember him saying, yo, I want you to come down to the studio. I want to meet you and whatever, whatever. And, um, it's a historical, it was a historical and magical night. That was also the night that uh, the Toronto Raptors made it to, uh, oh. made it to the playoffs 
and yeah. we were playing we were playing Philly, and that's that night that Vince Carter, that's my guy, but that's the night that Vince missed that shot from the oh, corner. Oh, we were playing you against know? Allen Iverson, right? Right. Yeah, he right, missed that right. shot. I remember, I remember that and game. We, yeah, and we were you know we were out of the playoffs. That it was that night that I first met Buster Rhymes and went down to the studio. So, wow. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I, I had a joint out called All Time Killing. And All Time Killing for me, that's the joint that connected me to Busta, to Jean A, to, to Pharrell, to 50 Cent, to all these wow. different people. They were all becoming fans because of that was my second signal. They liked the first one as well, but like that second one, that 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 song opened the doors to me getting to work with, you know, some of the people that I that I idolized at the time. You know what I mean? Mm. So, you know, working with Busta, you know, us, both of us, you know what I mean, uh, having Jamaican culture, like, we realized how similar we were. So although, you know what I'm saying, like, he's however much older, six or seven years older or whatever it is, um, we very much, you know, found the similarities, you know what I'm saying, in yeah. how we were raised and how we thought. And it was yep. fun being in, you know, it was fun because we were both like, like I say this all the time, you know, Buster's a direct influence on me. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, am, right. if I had to choose three MCs, it would be Chuck D, Buster Rhymes, and, uh, and KRS-One. Those were my, you know, probably my okay. biggest influences at the time. Okay. Okay. You know, so. Oh, 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 uh, oh, 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 oh. Talk, talk to me, talk to me. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a guy down here. Wait a minute, one second, y'all. I got a guy down here in this DC DMV area. He's a friend of mine. He's a business partner of mine. So I was telling him that I was going to do, um, I was going to interview you today, right? And he mm -hmm. played a song for me that you did down here at a place called Listen Vision Studio with KRS One. Do you remember that? So ah, I'm pulling out yeah, something for you. You you mm. are you are because let me show you something. One you know one thing, uh, one thing that's very interesting. This is the this is actually the 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 twenty year anniversary for that album, the Firestarter Volume One album that I put out that had Bacardi mm -hmm. slang, old time killing, and all that. It's actually mm -hmm. the twentieth anniversary this April. And in doing a lot of reflection, the funny thing was because you have to understand like it's regular now for you know for you to hear about the weekend. Tory Lanez, Justin right. Bieber, Shawn Mendes, Drake coming from Toronto. It's regular now. But at right. the time, I tell people it's like, never mind, there wasn't a path. It's like I had to take, um, you know, a machete and literally cut everything out of the way, you know what I'm saying, to make the path back then. So a lot of, I didn't get to enjoy and really internalize and take the time to appreciate a lot of what I was doing at that time because I was just like, just trying to kick every door down. So, I you know, it. when I, you know, when I would go see anybody, when I would go see, uh, you know what I'm saying? Those times, I'm just trying to think anybody, you know, Cypher sounds enough. Whatever. When I would go right. to, when I go to Boston and go see Clinton right. Sparks and G-Spin, when I would go I see Cosmic it. Kev in Philly, like I was I just, it. I was just- Wherever you could moment, get it, right. right. Anything. So somebody yeah. was like, yo, I need you, I need you to get on this joint. I'm right, penning my, I'm, I'm, I'm penning my shit. I'm doing it, killing it. On to the next thing. You know what I'm I saying? It's you. not until listen. Last night, Talib, because you know we all team Chappelle. Talib did a he he DJed on this IG live and he played this song. To me, it might as well have been a brand new song. He's like, Yo, Cardi, I know you don't remember this, and he played it, and I was like, Yo, what is that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> but that's that's literally how how my career feels sometimes. It's like. You know what I mean? Like I was, we were just, we were just in it just to, to do everything. Like we weren't setting out to be like the first to do whatever, but because we were given that first opportunity, we just wanted to murder everything anywhere right. we went every single it. time. You no, know it was I mean? just ironic. It was just ironic that when I was talking to the people down here, then, then they told me that and then, and then they played it for me. You know what I mean? So I, I actually listened to it and I heard you. So I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of, this is, a, but I get it, man. I understand. And, and it's just yeah. the world's, the world connects like it needs to, man. It's just, that's how it works. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Toronto is definitely, on the, is definitely on the map now. You know, do you, I, being a big part of that, you know, being the person that cut everything out of the way, how you feeling about what's happened since that? I mean, 
you know, in 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 the sense of uh, you saying you chopped down trees and got things out of the way and made it something. Uh, uh, made it. He said use a machete. That's a Jamaican, that's a Jamaican term. A machete is a Jamaican thing. He said a machete. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. I got, <laughs> I got Jamaican roots too. I got Jamaican roots too, man. That's why I know. Go ahead. The closest I was was Jamaica's living in Brooklyn. I'm sorry, dog, yeah, but it's all yeah, good. Stay right. Right. <laughs> you, know <what> I'm <laughs> you know, when you when you see a Drake now, you know, do you does your head does your chest swell up? Do you like, yeah, now what? You know, that it's it's very interesting because if you go back and you look at at, at Drake's legacy, um he had a he had a mixtape called Comeback Season. And that around that time is when we first connected. I think that might have been like 2006. So he's got a join on there, ironically, called The Last Hope, which is, you know, me and him trading bars back and forth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think, you know, when I was introduced to Drake, it was one of the guys from my crew. He, he, he came to my crib. He was just, he was losing it. And I was like, yo, bro, what's going on? And he's like, yo. There's this, yo, there's this guy, he's so fire, you gotta listen, da, 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 you know what I mean? And at the time, you have to, it, it sounds crazy now because we know who Drake is now, but at the time, he was right. what we used to call a backpack rapper. Like, he was just on some lyrical miracle, da, 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 da. like, that was his thing, you know what I'm saying? Right. So when I met him, he was, very, he was still very much like a rapper's rapper, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, when I see people like Drake, uh, there is a certain amount of pride that I feel because not just myself, but also, you know, he came up under Socrates. So Socrates was the first person from Canada who was a singer and a rapper. Obviously he was a rapper first, you know, he came out in, in, uh, you know, his big breakthrough was in 95. He had a joint called father time, you know what I'm saying? That New York got behind crazy and, you know, the UK, Japan and all that, but Drake came up with Socrates and Socrates was the first person who was doing both rapping and singing. So, you know what I'm saying? Like when we look at where he is now, for sure we feel a certain amount of pride because we believed in him early. His first song that was ever played on radio was a song with my guy Socrates and another guy who passed away, uh, who goes by the name of King Rain. That was uh, his first song that he ever had played on radio. You know what I'm saying? So wow. we definitely feel, we definitely feel the, the pride with him, but you know, we also knew I brought him to Akon, you know what I'm saying? I said, Akon, there's a kid who is a TV star, you know, uh, right now on Degrassi. And I'm like, yo, he's got a built-in audience, you know what I mean? But, right. you know, it is what it is. Akon, you know, Akon didn't move in, move on it like he should have at the time. But, you know, Con will tell yeah. you, and he said it, he said it in a bunch of interviews to where he's like, yo, Cardi brought me Drake, you know what I mean? But, you know, he just, he just. But we don't always do know, do we? Thing. We don't always yeah. know. We, let me ask you this, and, 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 and I don't mean to cut you off, Diamond, because I just want to make sure I get this in here before we uh, move on, because we got to keep it moving. But yep. there's, there's some artists that I've been listening to lately. One of the artists that I've been listening to is a guy named Daniel Caesar. I love oh. this kid. Oh, I love, that dude. I, I, yeah. Yo, it's him. It's him. There's another dude named, uh, uh, oh, God. Well, of course, you know, I love Frank Ocean, uh, uh, Frank, the Ocean guy. But this guy, mm -hmm, Daniel Frank Ocean, Caesar, yep. yeah, mm -hmm. Daniel Caesar, man, this kid is phenomenal, man. I mean, yeah. this, it, oh my God, man, what, what, what is your experience with him, man? I, I'm just curious. Yo, I'm not gonna, I, I'm I not just gonna not lie. Hip to him. I tried to, uh, you know, at the listen at the time, uh, he was, you know, when I tried to sign him, he was homeless. I remember his whole camp came through to wow. my office, yeah. and um, you know. I had to hold back the tears because some of his earlier stuff, man, it was so poignant. It was so wow. like straight to the straight to the gut, you know what I mean? So uh, I tried, I tried to, I tried to sign him, you know, early on. But I think at that time I was brand new as an executive. I didn't know what I was doing. If we're being completely honest, I just knew the talent. Like I just knew that I thought he was incredible, and he's always, you know, he's always been somebody who I've been a, a big fan of. I got to work with him. Uh, on a song called Cyanide on his last project. Mm -hmm. So the interesting mm -hmm. thing, you know, it's one of them. I know that song. I know that song. That's yeah. well, that's 
that's me. I'm singing the hook with him, and I'm also the guy that's doing like the the dance hall. The LSD, the dance hall the, the, the one about LSD's got me feeling yeah. empathy. I'm telling you, I know yeah, this kid, that's, man. That, that's me on that joint with him. So you know, I Daniel knew that Caesar. Was you. I knew that another was you. one. Yeah. Now that I'm talking to you. And I've been, I'm, that's my favorite song on that album. The LSD's got me feeling in empathy. Incredible oh song. Oh my. Incredible song. What? Incredible and that's you song. with the, 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 yeah, the, 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 all of that in the back, all of that, that, that uh, reggae yeah, type. Like, yeah, that's you. Yep. That's me. Oh, that's me. Jesus. <laughs> I love that song. That is my yeah. favorite song on that album. I, in, when I'm in the gym and I know I'm going off the rail, but they got to deal with it, fuckers, it's me. Uh, but uh, 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 <laughs> when I'm in the gym, that is yeah. the song that I will play over and over. I'm telling you, man. That's the joint. Listen, and I'll take a quick story. I'll make it quick. It's about two in the morning. I get a text and, you know, it's, it's like, it said, yo, Cardi, it's, it's Daniel, blah, blah, blah. And I hit him back. I said, because at the time I didn't have his number saved. I was like, Daniel, who? I said, who, this Caesar? He said, yeah. I said, yo, what up? Because, you know, that's my guy. And he's like, yo, I got I got a joint. And I think he would be ill on this. And I'm like, all right. So he texted it to me. And I played it. And I was like, what the? F-? I was, you know what I mean? Like, I was, I said, yo, Daniel. I was like, this joint is a hit without me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he was like, he was like, yo, yo. I, I, would, I would love for you to sing the hook with me. And then I would love for you to do, like, all the dope dance hall, like Stone Love kind of ad libs on there, and I was like, "Yo, done deal." So it was a pleasure to be on that joint. You know what I mean? The, the ad lib, I- the, the ad libs that you did, the ad lib that you did on that track. Mm-hmm. Um, no, Jesus man, thank Christ, you. Jesus! I'm telling you, <laughs> bra, 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 bra. Oh, no, yeah. man, that's just that's just the speaking, energy, yo. Speaking that's of popular music, bro, what was it like performing for Mandela? Oh shit! Uh, you said bop bop bop. That's the block. There you go. Yo, is let that, me show you man. something. I Please. was uh, shoot. That was I believe that was. Did he get released in '92? Mm-hmm. I wanna oh, I wanna yeah. say yeah I wanna say he got released in '92. So I was like, however old I was, I think I was in grade eight. I was in eighth grade at the time. So I was probably whatever I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do it just so I don't get crucified on the internet. Like I said, but I was, I was around 13 years old when that happened. And what basically what had happened, I was in a group when I was a little kid called, um, called YBP. Originally YBP stood for the young black Panthers, but it was a little bit too militant. So we changed it to young black and positive, but, um, you know, we had, uh, we had entered a, uh, I think it was like a, a contest within the within the education system, and you know we had a we had a joint that was called it might have been called like Black is Back or something, um, you know the rhymes looking back the rhymes were trash but at, you know at the time though they were they were good enough to win to win the the the, the a lot of attention and um, basically when you know one of the stops that Mandela was making was was in Toronto. And, you know, we, we, you know, they contacted us and said, hey, we would love for you kids to perform for Mandela when he comes to Toronto. So, I mean, listen, you know, meeting him and Winnie at the time, it was, still together. You know, it was, it was incredible. Yeah, they were still together because when he was released, wow. remember when he was released for a short span of time, mm-hmm. they was, you know what I mean? They were still yes. trying to like, yes. you know, they, they were still trying, trying to, to do the marriage, marriage thing. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I I had up until that time, um, you know, only this was somebody that was in my history books. So to see literally like living history, like somebody like, you know, we were like at the time he was in jail for 27 years and the whole nine. Yeah. But then it's like, yo, we're like, wait a minute. He he got out like we're <laughs> we're seeing history change. So I to be able that. to, you know, to be able to meet him backstage. You know, that that whole nine, like that was a true honor, man. That was a true honor. And um, it was an incredible experience. And and obviously it's like at the time, you can only look at it through the lens of being a child or being a kid living in that moment. But now that yeah. you're an adult and you look back, you're like, Jesus Christ. Like you don't even realize how much of an honor that was and how very few people, never mind MCs, could say that they performed for Nelson Mandela. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. True that. Well, that's that's true. Why the question actually was posed because that yeah. in itself. Right. Yeah, the experience. Even if you yeah. said the, 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 the rhymes are trash. Right. It you just but you yeah. can now pass on to your children. You know, come on, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, right. No, so it Cardi, was incredible. Cardi, I'm gonna flip the script, man. Um, do you have any questions for us? Or, you know, where's your head at at this point, man? I'm already uh, blown away because of the because of the Daniel Caesar thing. I'm I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, can't, I can't wait to get to the gym tonight because I'm gonna play it like crazy. And be like, this is my dude, right? Here. <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe the question that I have it's let me just like forgive me if I'm figuring it out as I ask the no, question it's because okay. for it's all for organic, me, man. It's all organic. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I stand on the shoulders of, of some greats that maybe were not able to penetrate uh, globally mm -hmm. um, like, they, like they would have wanted to. But I mean, you know, the first group to sell a million records from my country was a group called the Dream Warriors. You know what I mean? And the Dream Warriors, you know, Gangstar used to open up for them back in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because, wow. because, you know, over in Europe, because of the jazz influence, you know, they were the ones... Um, you know, at the time that were the bigger group, you know what I mean? And, you know, I heard that story straight from the horse's mouth as to how, you know, Prem and Guru used to open up for them, you know, back way back in the day. Um, you know, Maestro Fresh West, he was the first rapper from Canada to go, you know, multi-platinum within Canada. Also, you know, Mishy Me, if you go back to the ladies' first video uh, with Latifa and Moni, Mishy Me, she was one of those MCs that you know, I know one of those female MCs I, that were in, I, you know that were what, yo, that was in that I, video. I, I, I have to I have to cut you off. I know Missy Me. She was made yeah. by uh, Ivan Barry. I, yes, I, Ivan, Ivan bought her. Ivan actually bought her from Canada to Sugar Hill Studios, and uh, you know, and we was going to work with her, but something happened to where it is that you know it it didn't go down. But right. she was bad, man. She was she was yeah, awesome. She, she ended up signing to uh, MC Lights Pops, uh, or was it no, or was it Milt D's Pops? To First Priority was was that Milt D's dad that owned First Priority back in the day? I'm not gonna uh, lie, I, I, I don't know. I we're, can't, gonna, we're gonna let first you. We're gonna let you rock with that first, one. <laughs> okay, because First Priority had you remember Alliance from back in the day. They had mm -hmm. uh, you know they had signed Alliance and and some other folks, but Mishy Mishy had actually signed with them. Uh, back, you know, back in back in the day, back in the in the late 80s. But I say that to say, you know, for me coming from another country, uh, it's not just that you were the first or that you were one of the first um, and, you know, you were pioneering something. But I mean, at least with with y'all, you know, the culture was prevalent in America. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. We yeah. we had several obstacles. We had cultural obstacles that we had to get over you know what i'm saying like so many different things we had to leave our home country and go to the states go to europe go anywhere else you know what i mean because at the time it was very it to be honest it's sad we still don't have the infrastructure like we should even though we have some of the biggest mm -hmm. stars in the world today the actual landscape and infrastructure is still not where it should be but i guess my question was like you know knowing that you know you know again bigging up my culture. We got a big up a man like Cool Her coming from Jamaica, you know what I'm saying? Bringing the whole sound system culture into the Bronx and knowing that it was a very organic thing that was happening in the parks and, you know, everywhere else in the neighborhood. I guess my question to y'all was like, what, how did that, how did that feel? You know what I'm saying? Like, what was that feeling like? Because people say to me sometimes, oh man, you must, you know, you, 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 you may feel a ways that like, you know, your era you know, you missed out on maybe some of the monetary payoffs that some of these new cats get. But I also say, you guys don't know what that feeling was like, the energy. I would not trade that for anything under the sun. So what was that like, that feeling, that energy, like when these things were being created and, you know, y'all were aliens to the music community, to the musical community, you know what I'm saying? Like, what was that like for y'all? That, 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 that's a very good question. And, and, and that's something that I get a lot too. People say to me, well, how do you feel, you know, because it's a billion dollar business and, you know, this person is making right. all of this money and blah, 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 right, blah. Right. And, so, and, and, right. and this is this is my whole thing with with all of it. 
the fact of the matter is, no matter how it goes, no matter what goes down, like you said, it was magical. And now that I'm older, see, when I was younger, it's like you. When I was younger, of course, because we're the first commercially successful uh, uh, rap group in the world, we're the first platinum selling rap group in the world, we're the first everything in the world for rap music, hip hop. We're the first. We did everything first. Platinum, mm -hmm. television, touring, mm -hmm. everything. So I didn't get it in the first wave. Like that first, you know, five, six, seven. And then, you know, time I stepped away, I was so mad at the music at that time that I was still, I was still not really absorbing it. I didn't really start absorbing it. And I'll be honest with you. I didn't really start absorbing it till I was able to live life, get mature, have some success. Uh, uh, be able to understand and then be fortunate enough, which doesn't very doesn't happen a lot. I was fortunate enough to walk away from the thing that I loved for two decades and then come back to it and give me more love, more appreciation, more understanding. It's almost like I tell people that this whole thing, the music waited for me to be ready to deal with it again. And then when I was ready, it was like, okay, come on, let's take this, let's finish this run. So mm. what, what's happening to me now is that now I'm able to look back at that. And I, and, 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 and I can say, it, it's not, it, it, I, there's a song that we did with a cat named Bob Sinclair. You're probably familiar with Bob Sinclair. Yeah, and, yeah, of uh, course. And I talk about, I do a rap in that song when I say, you know, uh, uh, back in the day when it was second for the money and first for the heart. You know, uh, we, you know, I want to give, I, it's like, I talk about the pioneers of, of rap and, and Mel and I mean, and the Flash and DJ Hollywood and all. This is whole rap that I wrote about that. And so that for me is like the gift. Like I told you about your gift. My gift is that I was there. I was mm. there. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember, I remember coming to Toronto and playing at the Masonic Temple. And I remember being Ooh. the first, yeah, man. Concert yeah. all, yes, sir. Yes, man. I remember that. I remember that now. And mm -hmm. at the time, I was, I was Drake famous at the time. So, you know, I couldn't walk and, you know, so I was too yep. busy being, I yeah, was too yeah, busy yeah. being famous. You know what I mean? I was too busy being a teenager, yep. and, you know, going through my idiosyncrasies and finally overcoming, you know, whatever, you know, trips that I was going through. So I didn't get it. But now that I'm sitting here talking to you, you follow me? I remember that, man. And I remember the electricity that was when I first hit the stage and nobody had ever seen it being done live at that time they mm. had only heard it on the radio because buffalo played it and then it got up yeah. there because you know a lot of a lot of radio stations wasn't playing it up there in the beginning it was coming from mm -hmm. buffalo so buffalo got it and then everybody yeah. started yeah. hearing it in buffalo yes, sir. that's what that's what that's mm -hmm. what got it going in, yep. in toronto so i remember that man i remember standing on the stage and the girl screaming it's that man for me it's that magic that nobody else you know, I can talk about it. I, I, you can experience it to a certain degree because you know what it was like for your for, for, for Toronto. But for me, I know what it's like because I did it all over the world. Right. I did it all over the world. I went to I was the first time I stood on stage in France. The first time I stood on stage in you know in, in all these different countries. The first time you know I, I know what that's like. So it's the it's that that is it. The the the, the, the thing that I that I cherish most and I'm thankful for, and I tell you, those are my words, thankful and grateful, no matter what this world ends up doing, no matter what I end up doing in this world, the thing that I'm most thankful for and grateful for is not necessarily whether or not I make a hundred million dollars or whatever the case, no, no, granted, I, somebody can cut me a check, I got no problem with that. Uh, uh, yes, sir. But, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. I'm not, but the thing that I am <laughs> most, <laughs> the thing that I'm most grateful for is that I can remember it and I was there, and I can yeah. say that. How many times do you have a form of music that has that has exploded, that is nitrogen bomb exploded to the level that this thing has exploded? And you can say that you were the first person to do it. And you're still here. That's it's, crazy. It, it's just talking about it. I, I, I'm, I'm getting crazy because the more I, like I said, the more I do this show, the more I talk to people, the more I get into it, the more I think about it, the more I realize that it's like, I'm the guy. Like, damn. Well, here's, well, well, here's a question for you because, um, and a lot of not interesting and in, interestingly enough, uh, after so after y'all, so I want to say like, I want to say like mid to late '80s, we became mm -hmm. notorious 
for being a very, very tough crowd. And that's, mm-hmm. that stuck around for a long time to where mm-hmm. after, to, like after the infatuation part of it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. around the times when like, you know, Rakim, Cool mm-hmm. J, those guys, when they started coming up, we were notoriously, we were tough crowds and we were a rough mm-hmm. city. And only people that, you know, that really know Toronto know the type of neighborhoods that we have in the whole nine. I have a, my question that I'm throwing back is for me, it was rough coming up as an MC. Not now, like now it's sugar, sugar coat. Like it's just some sugar puff shit. Like you can, you can, you don't, you know, you don't gotta be from the neighborhood. You can be from wherever, you know, random person from your bedroom. Nobody cares anymore. But like, what was, what was the, you know, what was the culture like in New York City at that at that yeah. time, because we know what it what it grew from. We knew, you know, having mm-hmm. the the economic instability of the South Bronx mm-hmm. and like just you know what I mean, like the the vibe and the energy. What was it? What was it like? You know what I mean? You hear about all the, um, you know, you, you hear about all the all the stories of of people getting robbed at the LQ and all that. What was that mm-hmm. energy like? You know what I'm saying? Like when you guys were were doing it. You know what I mean? That's well, like. So- Coming, coming from the neighborhood and knowing what that is and knowing, you know what I'm saying, the stick up kids and all that stuff that was a part of my my coming up. What was that like, right. like being in the Mecca of hip hop? Well, see, that's the thing. Because we were in Jersey, you see what I'm saying? And we cut the record in New Jersey and we blew up. And then I started morphing into the scene. And that's, there used to be a place in the Bronx called Disco Fever. And that was mm-hmm. like my that was my opportunity to now finally kind of be in it. That's where I met Flash and and I and I, I first met Russell and I, and I was in it. So initially, man, there was a there was a lot of friction because it was so territorial. Because it came out mm-hmm. of the Bronx and Herc mm-hmm. and all of them was doing it, they were very upset about the fact that the first one to come out that really did it was coming from Jersey. Because Jersey, back in, uh... because back in those days. New York and New Jersey was like two different worlds. It was like mm-hmm. New York was happening and New Jersey was the country. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. even though we were we were a 15 minute ride over the bridge, it was two different worlds. I grew up in, you know, the suburbs and the whole nine yards, but my people were from Brooklyn. That's why I know about, you know, the Jamaican culture in Bed-Stuy. My grandmother, my, my, my father's grandparents, they're from an area called uh, Mount Vernon. That's right outside of the Bronx. Yeah, another, of course. I'm, I'm, t- mm-hmm. I'm telling you, man. Of course, my grand- of my, course. My, my grandfather, my grandfather grew, drank Jamaican rum all day long, man. The white Jamaican rum, the cool <laughs> Jamaican rum, yes. Overproof, my grandmother, yes, sir. My grandmother, made, my grandmother made curry goat. That's my favorite meal is curry goat yeah, because my yeah. I, I grew up eating homemade curry goat. So my point yes, being sir. is that because it was New York and it was their thing, because it was, I got it by word of mouth. I was DJing in, in a town called Hackensack and I heard mm-hmm. it from a guy that was an older guy who would, was able to go. I wasn't able to be in New York streets. So that's what we had to deal with. We had to deal with the fact that the world thought we were, you know, uh, uh, Elvis, you know what I'm saying? Right. But the streets right. thought we was a bunch of bum ass niggas. You know what I mean? Right. Because because right. how could they? And they wasn't legit. And this, that, and the third. So what ended up mm. happening is we had to go back after time passed, and then we came out with a patch Eighth Wonder, and then we came out with another record, and then we started becoming bigger and more successful. And you know, after a while, and then <laughs> and then when Mel and them came to Jersey. See, when Flash mm-hmm. and Mel and Scorp and all them came to Jersey, that's what started giving people a different outlook at what we was doing over there at Sugar Hill. Because mm. it, you couldn't get a deal to get you out in New York. You had to come to where Sugar Hill Gang was. And Sugar Hill mm-hmm. Gang was in Englewood, New Jersey. So everybody made the trek. So Sugar Hill Gang ah. was the first Def Jam. Sugar Hill Gang was the first place that was the first mecca but not enjoy mm-hmm. not priority not tiny boy all of that was later the mecca was sugar hill gang i mean sugar hill records yeah. that's where you came to so that's my experience with that that's what it was like it was like i always felt like i had to prove myself to every person that was from new york every person that was from harlem every person that i every time i ever did a show in that area i always felt like i had to do my absolute best you know, mm-hmm. a lot of times I was young, so I was very cocky. So my thing was the women. So I used to exit amp, amp, amp up and, you know, get the whole, the girls screaming and carrying on. Cause it's like, 
I don't give a damn where you think I'm from. I'm a star. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. These chicks, yeah. These chicks is fake. Yeah. You see this right here. You've seen television. <laughs> you seen the Jacksons. You, you know, because I come from that era where the Jacksons and all of them was, you know, they was the th- they was the star with people's Beatles and all of that. I said, I'm getting yeah. this Beatles love. You know what I mean? From yeah. Chicks, yeah. So, yeah. So that, 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 that's a very good question. But so, yeah, so, man. Yeah. So, so Cardi, uh, we know that you uh, work with uh, Team Chappelle. So how was it to work with Dave Chappelle, actually? And, and oh, how man. is it that he became so deep into involved in music? Um, I mean, I can say that at, I can say now that Dave, Dave is a good, you know, he's a good friend of mine, first and foremost. You mm. know what I'm saying? Um, like everybody else, though, I was just a Dave Chappelle fan. Like, you know what I mean? I was a big Dave Chappelle fan. But, uh, you know, his DJ trauma, I was, I was on tour somewhere. I don't know where I was. It's in, inconsequential. But uh, he hit me up. And I remember he's like, yo, we in Toronto uh, for the next two weeks. And he was like, you know, Dave, you know, Dave, want to he want to go out. What's a place that he should go to? Now, mind you, I'll be honest, I didn't even know which Dave he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, all right, what, whoever Dave is, I'm, you know, I gave him a spot to go to. And, you know, I remember I hit him up the next day. I'm like, how'd it go? He's like, oh, Dave had a ball. I'm like, all right, cool. And anyway, I got back to town on the Wednesday and Trauma was like, yo, Thursday. He's like, yo, Dave wants you to come to the show. And I'm like, I'm like, are we talking about Dave Chappelle, bro? He's like, yeah, like Dave Chappelle. He's like, who do you think I was talking about? I was like, yo, fam, like, you're my guy. So, you know what I mean? I was just like, yo, I, you know, I'll help you out, whatever. But I had no right. idea he was talking about Dave Chappelle. So, um, this was when, uh, this was, it's actually fairly recent. This was when, um, the uh, NBA all-star weekend was in Toronto at mm-hmm. that same time was when, was when Chappelle had a run up here. So I remember going to the show. My wife was pregnant with, I guess it was my daughter at the time. So this is like five years ago, maybe. Um, but I remember being at the show and it was a wild show because I remember Usher ended up sitting down beside me at the show. And, you know, after the show, we went up to his dressing room and, yo, we was just in there talking for two hours straight. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And he told me, he's like, yo, uh, he said, yo, Talib actually introduced me to your music decades ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, Talib was the one that introduced me to your, your Firestarter album, um, you know, back in, you know, 2001. And um, the very, ne- you know, he said to me, like, uh, when we were leaving, he's like, yo, I'm doing a private show tomorrow. I would love for you to perform, you know, with Usher. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, you know, like, what are you talking, word? So I'm like, all right. And, you know, the very next day I went and, you know, Usher performed, killed it. And, um, you know, I went up there and I just turned that place upside down. And, and from then that was it. You know what I mean? That wow. was it. Dave was just like, Dave was just like, nah, man, like, you know, for a long time, I've been a fan of yours, but he's like, yo, in terms of just MC and you're one of my favorite MCs. And, you know, literally from that, like, you know, he came to, uh, uh, you know, I'm turning 45 this year, but, you know, I remember he came to, you know, my 40th birthday party, he flew in by himself. He hopped on the PJ, flew in and just came to my party by myself. And I remember everybody like, you know, people were just like, they're used to it. Cause I had a bunch of celebrities at the party, but they're like, right. they're like, fam, is Dave Chappelle <laughs> here by himself? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, like, like, how is yo, that happening? Yo, so, but that, that's, a, that's the type of dude that Dave is. And we've been super close since then. That's and crazy. I'll be honest, yeah. there was there was there was a there was a short amount of time where I was like, yo, I'm yo, I'm done with the artist shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I just there was, you know, I just didn't have the the taste for it anymore. Cause, you know, it was going towards that whole at the time, that whole quote unquote bumble rap shit. And right. you know, for real MCs, it, it was just I didn't have the passion. But I remember, you know, uh Dave has these things called the juke joint. And he had the juke joint in his town of, of Yellow Springs. And, you know, he yeah. flew me and my family uh, and my best friend who's from Mount Vernon. So when you mentioned Mount Vernon earlier, I was like, yeah, I know all about Mount Vernon. But um, I, 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 I spent so much time, so much time. At man, Mount rest Vernon. in peace to Heavy D. 
Big up to my boy, yeah, oh, yeah. to my brother no doubt, no doubt. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, um, when I went to when I went to Yellow Springs and I was kicking it at, at Dave's crib, and I remember one night, you know, it's about four o'clock in the morning, and he's just like, yo, Cardi, like we we had both been drinking, and he's just like, yo, he's like, you gotta release material, bro, because he's like, yo, I know if I'm a fan, I know there's hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, who are fans as well, bro. And he's like, yo, you you got to release some shit. And I remember I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, listen, Dave Chappelle don't need nothing from me. He don't owe me nothing. There's no, re there's no reason for him to say that. You know what I'm saying? Like other than organically, uh, you know, him just really feeling that way. And it was an important weekend because I remember that night it sparked something in me, you know what I'm saying? To where I'm like, yo, like maybe, you know what I mean? Like maybe he's right. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, what was incredible was before I left, I remember he he opened up his his laptop and he's like, yo, Cardi, I want to show you something. And I remember he showed me this, this comedy special that he had filmed. And he showed me about, you know, 10, 15 minutes. He's like, yo, what do you think? I'm like, yo, Dave, this is crazy. I'm like, yo, what are you doing with this? He's like, yo, you really think this is dope? I'm like, Dave, this is fire, fam. And I remember him being like, yeah, you know, we're, we're working on something uh, right now. He's like, I just filmed it with my own money. And I was like, yo, that's, that's dope. Anyways, literally two weeks, maybe three weeks tops later is when that big Netflix announcement came out to where they're like, yo, they paid him 30 million for one that he had filmed already. And a one 30 million saw. to film another yeah. one. The one, the one that I saw, he had $30 million sitting on his laptop collecting dust. Wow. That's Unbelievable. crazy. Unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. yo, so we, so we've just all, we just always been, we've always been brothers. And I mean, like it was a, it was a real honor a couple of years ago um, for me to have, you know, the, the, the end music in, um, uh, in one of his Netflix. Yeah. No, no. In his, uh, his Netflix special that he came out wow. with a couple of years, a couple of years ago. Um, shit. The name is eluding me right now because uh, it's one of them. It's one of them um, thesaurus type joints to where, it's not a it's not a everyday it's not an everyday use of language. I can't remember what the title was, but when you go back to like uh the first the first two that he released, uh, mm -hmm. if, and if you go to the first one, um yeah, my my song is is the one that plays at the at the end. Oh, equanimity, that's the one. If you okay, go okay, back yeah. and you look at equanimity, okay. yeah, my my joint my my song that I did with Knotts, who's from the DMV, he's from Norfolk. Um, oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Me and him, we we did we did the the, the joint. That's the end credits in in equanimity. I gotta get it. Listen, man. Listen. I I mean, we could we could do this forever and ever. But this has been exciting. You you are now officially. You know. I'm trying to I'm see if I got. No, I'm gonna send y'all the song. Y'all the song. Y'all can know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> But I'm getting ready because I, I brag to everybody about who I interview at the gym. That's because that's my life. I go to the gym. I like it, that's all I do. But I, when I get to, yeah, and when I get to, I'm going to be like, yo, I'm telling you, this dude right here, I talked to him today. I can talk to you for hours because the guy, I know you, the, the BP thing and this, that thing, but I want to do this because we, we, we don't want to keep you, keep you. I just want to let you know that as of this moment, you have now become a part of the Sugar Hill Gang family. You are now. Cuzzo. Yeah. So when we come, when I see you, yeah. or you see me, or anybody in the crew, and we say what's up, Cuzzo, you gotta say what's up, Cuzzo. No question. Cause, yes, no question. sir. What else? Yo, what that, up? that is an honor. You, that is you an are honor. absolutely family, man. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful from the bottom of my heart, man, for you to give us this time for you to come on here and do this, man. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna roll up out of here, man. And we gotta get up out of here. This right here is the Sugar Hill Gang podcast. I am the host of this show with my boys. Say goodnight, T Dynasty. Good night, T Dynasty. <laughs> say say good night, hand dog. Say good night, hand dog. On the forever, baby. Cardi, it's been a pleasure, brother. No, the honor Cardi. is mine. Cardi, say good night, Cardi. <laughs> Big up. <laughs> 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 this is the Sugar Hill Gang podcast we love you for loving us we love you for listening we love you for watching we love you for being around peace y'all and we are oh. Oh. Ah. Ah.